If you're ever trying to make a sound like this, but it ends up sounding like this, well, today I'm going to cover how to fix that. Hey, it's Marcus from Hello Sweet. One of the easiest way to get cleaner ambient mixes is to EQ your reverb. In this video, I'll explain why we should do it and how we can do it, both in software and in output gear. Before we dive in, might I briefly draw your attention to the links in the description? where you'll find a treasure trove of free resources for mixing, mastering, and releasing ambient and experimental music. You can even request a free one-track master sample from me. Right, on with the show. So reverb at its heart is an emulation of what it sounds like to play a sound in a room. It mimics all the reflections and the interactions that happen when a signal bounces off the walls and back to your ears. And this means that whatever signal you put into the reverb is going to affect what the reverb sounds like. There are three common complications that we run into when we're using a reverb. Number one, reverb will affect all frequencies equally. So if you put a track through an unfiltered reverb that has all the frequencies present, they will all come through that reverb. In the case of the top end in particular, this can make for a pretty harsh rain on a tin roof sound. Number two, reverb will be disproportionately affected by areas of the frequency spectrum that have more energy than others. If there's too much energy in a particular frequency, you might get what some call a blowout effect. This is a big contributor to muddy mixes. And number three, reverb can easily take over a mix and make everything sound muddy, particularly around the low mids in ambient. So the way to get around all of these issues is using EQ. We have two ways that we can EQ a reverb, pre-effect and post-effect. Pre-effect EQ is when we control what frequencies go into the reverb and at what amounts. This could be using a filter back inside the reverb itself, or it could be a separate EQ pedal or plugin put between the instrument and the reverb's input. This allows us to remove any frequencies that might cause trouble. Let's see an example. So for this demonstration, I'm using one of my older tracks and I'm going to add this reverb as a send to my mix. As you can see, I've chosen my favorite reverb, the Valhalla Supermassive, and I've turned it all the way up to give it this absolutely massive kind of lush verb. But as you're about to hear, uh, this may not sit perfectly well in the mix. So let's have a listen first without the reverb. <laughs> And then with the reverb. Okay, so I've got the reverb up pretty loud, but you can hear that it's basically taking over the mix, right? That all of the bottom end is being really exaggerated, all of the top end is being really exaggerated, and it's basically drowning out everything else that's happening in the mix. Um, so what I wanna do is start to use some EQ on the input, so all the signal that's going into that reverb, and we'll see if we can bring it down so that it isn't as kind of activated, so that we still get a lush sound, but it's more controlled. So let's go back into it again. I'm just going to solo the reverb here. Let's see what happens if I add a high pass filter, so a low cut to this. So suddenly it has this more kind of frozen texture to it. It's it's uh, no longer kind of bouncing up and down with that bass, so it's not going to interfere with that bass as much anymore. But we still need to work on that top end, and I might actually roll this back a little bit. Let's keep going. All right, and let's add a low pass filter, so a high cut. So suddenly, it's got a much more subtle vibe to it. It's still kind of calming down a little bit. But I've cut quite a lot. And all that's really coming through is about 
100 ish hertz to 1k. And you get this kind of nice, subdued, kind of chill feeling to it. And I have a feeling that now, I might turn my feedback down a little bit. I have a feeling that now this might sit better in the mix. So let's see what happens if I turn it back on. All right, if I turn it off, let's see what difference it makes. Back on again. So it's adding some presence in the mid range. And then I can probably bring this up a little bit. I can just mess around with my EQ a little bit more until I get the effect that I'm looking for without it taking over the mix. Turn it off again. All right, so we're getting that, we're getting the reverb coming through, but suddenly it's not, it's not feeling like it's overactivated. So it's as simple as that. It's just cutting out a little bit of the original signal so that it doesn't excite the reverb as much. And you just adjust it until it gets to what you want. I mean, you can add other EQ to this too. Sometimes I like to put a little dip around, you know, 1K-ish as well um, to take out some other parts that are being activated in the original mix. So you just go listen back and forth to what kinds of things are going to excite the reverb too much and can I cut that back until it just sits nicely without having to reduce the volume of the reverb because then it kind of disappears, right? Post-effect EQ is for sculpting the reverb so that it sits correctly in the mix and doesn't interfere with the other parts. This can help reduce that muddiness. As with pre-effect EQ, this can be done either with filtering inside the reverb or with an EQ plug-in pedal or your mixer's EQ section if you're mixing in hardware. So let's go back to our example. Okay, so we have set up our pre-effect EQ so that we've made sure that the reverb is not being overexcited with by our original instruments, our original signal, but we still need to make sure that that reverb also sits okay in the mix with the instruments that are being fed into it. So remember that whenever we're feeding something into a reverb, it's creating like delayed versions of it that are going to compete with that original instrument so that we're going to lose a little bit of clarity. We're gonna get a bit more kind of muddiness and cloudiness because of the fact that it's been fed into the reverb. So we need to kind of balance those things together. And that's what the post effect EQ is for. So we've got a couple of ways we can do this. Valhalla Supermassive has an EQ at the end where you can EQ the reverb after the instruments have gone through it. So we can mess around with this a little bit. And then I'm going to do a bit more targeted work using uh, just a regular EQ plugin to try and get that balance where I, it adds that uh, atmospheric quality to the track, but it doesn't destroy the original instruments. It allows them to come through. So let's start off by just tinkering with the high and low cut to see whether that makes any difference. So I can see here from just looking at the analyzer that there's quite a lot of low end here that we can probably cut out. So what I'm going to do is start with our low cut and see if we can cut some of the low end out of that reverb. And pretty quickly you can see that's already come down quite a bit. I don't know if we need to take off the high end, but let's just see what happens. check. Okay, it's sounding alright. So that's the rough one. So now what I'm going to do is listen to the reverb against the instruments that have this kind of mid-rangeness to them. Uh, and see whether I can balance them out a little bit get a better against each other. Also so that I could probably maybe even give a little bit of a boost to that reverb as well.
Okay, so first thing I want to do... First thing I want to do is try and keep this part here, which is not poking through as well. bit more space around the 1k mark. Then I might give a little bit of a dip at say around 100 hertz ish. Just to pull out some of that base. I think somewhere in around the 500 hertz mark is where I'm going to kind of give the reverb its spot in the mix. I feel like that kind of upper octave there in the mid-range is still kind of interfering. So I'm going to try and trim that back a little bit too. So let's go back and listen to the So let's go back and listen to what I've done here and just see how it sounds now. So we'll start with the EQ off. And then EQ on. off Thank you on and then reverb off so obviously I'm going to be spending more time like tweaking this to get it right but you can hear Basically, what I've tried to do is try and get the reverb out of the way of the important parts of the original mix while still having its own place in the mix that doesn't necessarily interfere but tries to add or boost those parts of the mix that I want to sound more atmospheric. This is what makes a big difference in an ambient mix between sounding like a bit of a muddy mess and everything kind of having its place and you getting that separation and everything feeling clearer. It's all about just sculpting that reverb so that it sits in the right place in the mix. Now, in order to get the most benefit from this process, I recommend that you always record your reverb separately. So that means as an auxiliary send. If you're using software, this is super easy. But if you're using outboard gear, this could be trickier. You have a couple of options for pre-EQ. 
you can either check your pedal or module to see if it has an onboard high pass or low pass filter and tweak those if they exist. Otherwise, you could run an EQ module or pedal before you feed the instrument into the reverb and this will give you more control. And for post EQ, if you've run your reverb as an auxiliary send, your best option is to record it separately and then apply the EQ at the mixing stage. If you're running through an outboard mixer, you could reroute the auxiliary send output back into one of the mixer's inputs and then EQ it there. Just make sure you turn the sends off that channel. And for those of you who like to use multiple reverbs and having trouble to get them all sit together nicely, try switching one of them to mono. You might be surprised at how good it sounds. So that's it. I hope it was helpful. If you haven't already subscribed, please do. Your support will help me keep putting out high quality content for experimental and ambient artists. Don't forget to check the links in the description to access all my free resources. And if you're looking to go further down the rabbit hole, check out this video that covers everything you need to know to get started with compression for ambient music. Until next time, keep making music. Cheers.